About seven years ago, I picked up a shitty Nikon camera and started taking street photos. I really loved shooting street photography and I just wanted to find a way to make a living doing it. Obviously, things aren't that simple. And over the last seven years or so, I've learned so much about photography techniques, how to make a living and just getting by in the creative landscape that we're in at the moment. So for you, you're the lucky ones who don't have to spend seven years making my mistakes and learning my lessons. Instead, you can watch this short video. Here are seven lessons that I've learned in seven years. I think when we begin film photography, we can have this belief that you start taking pictures and then you start releasing prints and those prints start selling and that gets the ball rolling for your photography career. But unfortunately, the truth is, unless you have a really big following, prints don't really sell that well. Generally, prints are a really small part of a photographer's income. And the same goes for books too. Now, don't get me wrong, there are big photographers out there that can make a living off just producing books and things like that but I do believe that those are the exception and not the rule. Now, before you just think I'm gonna give up, this is a really negative video, I honestly think this is a good thing. If you started trying to sell prints and believed that they were one of the main ways that a photographer might make a living, and then you realize that things aren't going as well as you thought, it could make you wanna quit and stop being a photographer because you're thinking, well, I'm no good at this then. The truth is, Selling prints or books or anything like that is a part of the pie. It's not the whole pie. There are so many other ways that you might make a living as a film photographer or just a photographer in general. And typically as a creative, especially these days, your income will come from a lot of different things rather than just one big thing. A while ago, me and my friend were making a very early morning commute to a hellish job in a hellish capitalist landscape when I decided I was going to take pictures of our commute. Because it was not very light at all, I had to shoot at 1 30th of a second. Now I was thinking these pictures are going to be blurry, but I really want to just take them anyway. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was shooting some of my favorite pictures. The low shutter speed added so much texture and just such an unusual feel to the pictures and they didn't really look like anything that I'd really seen before. Now I don't want to make it sound like low shutter speeds are this new thing that no one's ever heard of but what I mean is that before that time I'd never really experimented with them. And I mean especially with film being as expensive as it is these days, it's hard to want to experiment with film. But trust me, going out of your way to try and do slightly different and more creative types of photography can really transform your style. A while back, when I used to get my film shots back, I used to feel a bit let down. I kind of felt like I'd done something wrong because my pictures were feeling a bit lifeless, a bit void of color or contrast. But that was before I started editing my film photos. There's this kind of really dumb assumption that you're not supposed to edit film photos. And I'm not trying to shit on people. I mean, people that should know better seem to have this idea that we shouldn't be editing film photos. It's just daft. Film photos have been edited for years and years before Lightroom ever existed. Some of your favorite old photos have been edited in some form in the past. Editing just small basic things like highlights and shadows and exposure and small amounts of contrast and things like that. Your white balance and your vibrance and just small things can completely transform your images. This is something that took me far too long to do. I know there are a lot of people that do this these days but I wanted to include this in here. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, then it would be really cool if you subscribe to the channel. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel, and if you do enjoy the videos, then it really helps me to create more, better videos. And I wanna do just that. This one is short and sweet. If you haven't experienced this already, then I'm gonna save you some money. 
Most of the time, if you have to pay to enter some sort of photography competition, it's not gonna be worth it. Usually, the only real winners are the hosts. There you go, I just saved you 20 quid. This one is something that I feel really strongly about. A lot of people find this really difficult, but I'm telling you, you need to fail. Don't get me wrong, I know how TikTok hustle grind culture that sounds, but hear me out. Learning is all about being open to failing and being open to feedback and being open to people telling you that actually what you've done isn't great and here is how you can do better. I spent way too long believing that what I was doing was really good and not being able to take any feedback whatsoever because I just wouldn't hear it. It's only in the last few years that I've pulled my head out of my ass and I've been able to grow a lot more and been able to become a better photographer and just better in general, I think. Go ahead and make yourself vulnerable to failure and allow yourself to take on board criticism and feedback and then you can continually get better and better. This one is quite a small, simple thing, but it's so incredibly important. I literally shot no matter what the light was, no matter what the time of day was, for years. I didn't care about whether light was soft or light was harsh. I didn't know anything about that. In some ways, that can help you to take incredible pictures because you're not even thinking about those constraints, but also, it is important to know that soft light is the best light. Now I'm sure you've seen the videos that show you how to shoot at golden hour or blue hour and those are important. Those are some of the most diffused light that you will get. But you also need to be able to find how to shoot in soft light when soft light doesn't seem to be available. Whether that's using a diffuser or using a bit of shade from a building or something like that. If you're taking portraits, soft light is near enough completely necessary. Learn how to utilize soft light and your pictures will stop sucking quite as much. Now, this last tip is quite a hard learned lesson. Quite a while ago, I bought a Pentax 6.7 medium format camera and a Contax G1 because surely then I would take even better pictures, right? Well, I'd say on the whole, the pictures from my shitty old Nikon were probably even better. Better film or better gear won't necessarily make you a better photographer. If you're restricted by the fact that your camera is really expensive and you don't want to break it or now you're shooting a more expensive film stock so you don't want to use it as freely as you would have done previously or any number of things, then this is getting in the way of the most important thing, taking a lot of good photos. Now I'm not saying you should go out of your way to get a shit camera or only shoot on Kodak Color Plus, but what I am saying is that if there is something that is causing a barrier to you shooting or stopping you from feeling like you can take a camera out or whatever, then you need to really think about why that is. If you shoot more freely with a moderately good camera that can take fine photos, then maybe you should just go for that. Because if something stops you from going out and shooting, then you're definitely not gonna get a good photo because you're not gonna be taking a photo. So yeah. New gear typically has quite a small impact on the overall image in photography. On the whole, a lot of these lessons have had a massive impact on me throughout the last seven years or so. Yeah, they may seem really simple, but people learn in different ways and we all have different challenges. So you've just got to look at it as continually trying to progress, even if it's just a little bit. And hopefully some of these lessons have helped you not make the same mistakes that I've made. 
If you did like this video, then you're definitely gonna like my next video right here.